1692, the small Puritan town of Salem, Massachusetts, was gripped by an unimaginable fear, witchcraft. The air was thick with suspicion, and the once peaceful community found itself in the throes of a terrifying ordeal. The Salem Witch Trials became an infamous chapter in history, where paranoia and hysteria ruled over reason. The trials were marked by a frenzy of accusations, often based on little more than rumors and personal vendettas. But how did some manage to escape the deadly accusations? What strategies did they employ to survive in such a perilous time? The accusations begin. The terror began innocuously enough. It started with a few strange incidents that quickly spiraled out of control. Strange illnesses, mysterious behaviors, and the finger pointing started. People began to see witchcraft in every misfortune, every unexplained event. Neighbor accused neighbor, friends turned on friends, even family members weren't spared. The fabric of the community was torn apart as trust dissolved into suspicion. Once an accusation of witchcraft was made, escaping its clutches was nearly impossible. The accused were often presumed guilty from the start and proving one's innocence was a daunting task surviving the trials. Some resorted to desperate measures. The fear of execution drove people to take extreme actions to save their lives. False confessions became a tragic lifeline. People would admit to witchcraft, hoping that by cooperating they might be spared the ultimate punishment. I have seen the devil's book, they'd proclaim, hoping to avoid the gallows by implicating others. This tactic, while sometimes effective, only fueled the hysteria further. Others fled, leaving behind everything they knew. The fear of being accused was so great that some chose to abandon their homes and seek refuge elsewhere. And some stood trial, trying to prove their innocence in a court where reason was scarce. They faced intense scrutiny and harsh questioning, often with little hope of a fair outcome. The pressure to conform was immense. People were afraid to speak out against the trials, fearing that any dissent could lead to their own accusation. The fear of being the next accused kept everyone on edge. The atmosphere was one of constant tension and anxiety, the executions and aftermath. Sadly, many were not so fortunate. The trials led to the execution of innocent people, their lives cut short by the madness of the time. Nineteen were hanged, one was pressed to death with heavy stones, and many more languished in jail. The brutality of the punishments reflected the depth of the community's fear and desperation. The madness only began to abate when the public and authorities started questioning the legitimacy of the accusations. As doubt crept in, the fervor of the trials began to wane. The trials ended, but not before leaving a deep scar on the community. The aftermath was a time of reflection and regret as people came to terms with the horrors they had witnessed. The Salem witch trials remain a stark reminder of the dangers of mass paranoia and injustice. They highlight the consequences of allowing fear to override reason and compassion. They serve as a cautionary tale of what happens when fear overrides reason. The lessons of Salem are as relevant today as they were in 1692. Let's learn from history so we're not doomed to repeat it. Thanks for watching. Remember, understanding our past is key to building a better future.